In this video, we're going to look at one of the most complex and controversial topics in the impacts of climate change. What we're going to do is explore the relationship between climate change and armed conflict. We're going to do two things in this video. The first one is look at the claim that there is a relationship between climate change and armed conflict. What exactly is it that people mean when they say that a future on a hotter planet might be one with more armed violence? The second thing that we're going to do is look at the evidence. How is it that researchers have established this connection between climate change and armed violence and how reliable are their conclusions? So what is it that people are claiming when they say that there might be a relationship between climate change and armed conflict? Usually what they mean is that they think that there is a likelihood or a risk that in countries that already have a history of armed conflict that climate change might make this worse. They're suggesting really that in places which are firstly exposed to many of the future impacts of climate change, hurricane strikes, droughts, sea level rise, that this extra stress, this extra strain that the impacts of climate change will put on a region might tip it back into armed conflict. So there are two things here that people are saying are precursors or preconditions of this relationship. The first one is some kind of history of armed conflict, conflicts that could rear up again. And the second thing is being highly exposed to climate change impacts. The suggestion is usually that it is in these places with this kind of history and without the institutions and without the stability to deal with conflict that climate change might tip places into armed violence. People aren't usually suggesting that otherwise completely stable countries or countries that have been at peace for many, many decades might suddenly lurch into armed violence simply because of the impacts of climate change. Usually what people are referring to is countries that are already unstable and their fear is that climate change or more specifically the impacts of climate change will make those countries even more unstable or halt them on their path towards stability. So where does the evidence for these claims come from? There is actually a large and rich academic literature looking at the relationship between altered weather patterns and armed conflict. And the researchers that do this kind of research have two really powerful sets of data at their disposal. The first is a wealth of data on the impacts of climate change. And not just the impacts of climate change, but the way in which weather patterns have shifted and altered and changed over the past. They can then use this data and combine it with one of the many databases of armed conflict and try and look for correlations. So there are in fact many hundreds of studies where researchers have taken one aspect of altered weather conditions, say changes in rainfall pattern, drought or the incidence of natural disasters and combine that with data about the increase or decrease in armed violence and being able to look at the correlation there. They've been able to establish whether these things move in lockstep or whether they don't. The conclusions from these studies are actually very, very diverse. Some of them find a powerful relationship between altered weather patterns or between natural disasters and altered patterns of armed violence. Essentially what those researchers have found is this, that when weather patterns alter, when things become unstable, it in turn somehow leads to an uptick in armed conflict. Other studies have reached different conclusions. They found that altered weather patterns or incidents of disasters actually have no effect on the increase or decrease of armed violence. It seems that these patterns of violence or war or conflict actually aren't particularly linked to the weather or to disasters. So this presents us with a dilemma. How do we interpret this body of diverse research? How do we interpret all of this research that points in one direction after one study and in one direction after another study? What general or universal conclusions can we draw from it? And that in itself has become a point of academic contention as well. Several different groups of researchers have taken all of these studies and combined the data from them to try and do exactly that, to try and reach a more general conclusion from all of these studies together. And again, the researchers when looking at the studies have concluded different things. So for example, one group of researchers took a group of these climate change and conflict studies combined the data from them and found quite surprisingly and worryingly that there is in fact a powerful relationship 
between altered weather patterns and armed violence. However, another group of researchers then took a very similar group of studies, used slightly different statistical methods, and reached almost the opposite conclusion. They found that when combined, the data from all of these studies actually pointed to there being no significant relationship between climate change and armed conflict. A more comforting conclusion, but is it accurate? So what do we do with these competing conclusions? Because actually they haven't really answered the question that we really wanted to know about. Of course, we are all worried that life on a hotter planet, life after some degree of climate change, might be more violent, there might be more conflict, there might be more war. And what people want to know is, is this the case? Is this something that we need to worry about? And the answer that the researchers have, had, have come up with is inconclusive. One group of researchers says one thing, another group says another thing. So what do we do with this? What useful conclusions can we actually draw from it? My view is that actually it doesn't matter that the studies point in different directions. And here's the reason why. Most of the individual studies, most of these pieces of research are about firstly a very specific geographical location. It might be one country, it might be one region, it might even be a locality within a country. They're not general, they're, they're looking at somewhere in particular. The second thing to note about many of these studies is they're looking at a particular kind of change in the weather. They're looking, for example, exclusively at drought or exclusively at flooding, just for example. So here's what we can draw from those studies. The simple answer is that in some locations and when presented with certain kinds of altered weather patterns or certain kinds of disasters, some specific places may experience upticks in armed violence. It might be that those regions or those countries do, on a hotter planet, experience more violence and more conflict. But what the studies also show us is that there seem to be other places where altered weather patterns or disasters actually don't increase the incidence of armed violence. It doesn't seem to have, have an effect on conflict or war. So the usefulness of these studies is not to draw general universal conclusions. It's not to make apocalyptic predictions about the future. The usefulness of all of this research is actually that it enables us to look at specific places that might be at risk of increased levels of armed conflict on a hotter planet. Links to all of this research and our summary of it are in the links below and subscribe to make sure you keep up to date with all of our videos.